This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration of a Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office and its partners to showcase stories of local entrepreneurs and small business owners. My name is Victoria. I'm from the BBOC of the Pacific and today I have a special guest uh, who is a veteran, a great chef, successful entrepreneur and an owner of a hu hugely southern cuisine. Uh, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. So can you tell us a little bit more about your motivation to start a business? Why to be a business owner? Well, um, my motivation was um, I was at 26 years in the Navy and um, it was time for promotion. Um, I was at the, the tail end uh, and because I hadn't gotten promoted when I, uh, a little sooner, it was time for me to get out. Um, fortunately for me though, I was selected. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision. Uh, I had to choose either to stay in or continue to uh, prepare myself for the transition because at some point you'll have to separate. And so I separated. Mm -hmm. um, initially I planned on opening up a catering company. Uh, I went through the SBA uh, mentorship program uh, and got the assistance and found out what I needed to do from there and here I am. Great. So as I understand you have passion for food, right? And uh, you are a chef. Yes. And you yeah. love cooking. Yes. So yes. why not just be a chef? Why a business owner? Well, um, the business owner allows you to uh, share your talents with more people. Uh, chef, they could just cook for one or two people. Uh, but with the business, again, you get a chance to uh, have others experience your passion through the cooking. So your business is quite interesting. It's sold southern food in Hawaii. So why southern food and why in Hawaii? Well, uh, my grandmother had a restaurant, uh, and it was Southern cuisine. Coming from Cleveland, really, that's, that was the only cuisine that we had. Uh, so it became natural and very easy for me to be able to uh, emulate, uh, duplicate some of the uh, dishes that she made. Uh, uh, again, I did that all my life, so mm -hmm. well, it was really easy for me to just continue uh, and start that up here in Hawaii. It just felt natural. It right? was very, very natural. So how do you think military experience helped you in uh, business, running a business? Did it help? It did. It did. I um, did 26 plus years. Uh, and I was actually in the submarine community. So there was a lot of uh, training uh, done to prepare you for, uh, to be successful uh, in your mission um, and I just took a lot of that training and carried on again after doing it for 26 years you don't you don't forget uh, all of the training that you've uh, received and so I was able to carry some of it into the uh, the restaurant business mm -hmm. so being mission focused goal oriented yes uh, you you definitely um, failure is not an option you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the restaurant business uh, definitely is uh, not easy, not easy at all. Uh, a lot of businesses fold within the first year. Uh, they say that uh, if you can make it to three years, you're doing something. Um, it was never even a consideration that I, that I wouldn't make it in the past one year. So here I am now, five years, uh, still enjoying cooking. Uh, Fantastic. So, southern food, why do you think it's successful in Hawaii? It's, it's different. different. Yes, it's just different. Um, a lot of times you see it on different shows. Um, you uh, hear people talk about it, and you may not uh, have been in an area uh, where you got an opportunity to experience it. Um, being here in Hawaii uh, with us, um, 
offering more of the traditional dishes that people are more a little, maybe a little bit more familiar with makes it a little, little uh, more attractive. Mm -hmm. If I did like chitlins all the time, then people probably wouldn't be as attracted to, to those. But we, we keep it simple. We do more of the traditional chicken, catfish, greens, uh, mac and cheese, candy yams, that type of stuff. What's not to love, right? Yes. <laughs> Comfort food. So how did you come up with your business concept? Uh, so you have a restaurant, you also have food trucks. How did this idea evolve? Well, uh, it, ev it evolved uh, again uh, with uh, working at my grandmother's restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not so much the management of it, but just the uh, passion, uh, seeing how much she enjoyed cooking, how much I enjoyed eating and cooking. Uh, it was a, a natural just transition that we st strictly just focused on the restaurant uh -huh. the first uh, three years. Uh -huh. uh, as we uh, became proficient, as things, uh, uh, we got the right staff, then we were able to expand uh, and utilize uh, trucks as an extension of the restaurant. Uh -huh. So for those who would like to start a restaurant, what would you advise? Where should they start from? Well, I started at the Small Business Action Center. Um, mm -hmm. It's like a one-stop shop here in Hawaii where you can get uh, information on all aspects of whatever business uh, you intend to uh, uh, venture into. Uh, and they were very, very helpful. Um, and then, of course, I signed up for the SBA um, and then I got a mentor to help me to do a uh, business plan. Uh, I got a chance to talk to experts that, uh, uh, that were successful running, running restaurants. Um, and then I actually went and talked to other restaurant owners. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you get so overwhelmed with um, not knowing that you don't know um, and a lot of times um, other restaurant owners can give you some advice to help you avoid some of the pitfalls. So I've talked to quite a few restaurant owners. Um, sometimes I was familiar with the situation that they were dealing with and other times I wasn't. Uh, but just to, to be able to talk to them uh, and get honest feedback um, on some of the challenges that you face was, was definitely very helpful. That's very smart. So you actually were doing research by talking to people who already did it. Oh, yes. Right? So who told you to do that? Was, just, was it just your idea or just feeling that you need to go out there and talk to people? I prayed so much that first year. Um, again, there were so many different uh, um, things that came up. Um, a lot of questions. Oh, it, it was, I mean, you, you, I expected that there was going to be some things that I didn't know. Um, again, the challenge was uh, dealing with the things that I didn't even know that would be an issue uh, that, that actually came up that I had to deal with. But definitely talking to other restaurant owners helped, helped out quite a bit. So Business Action Center, SBA, SBDC helped you, right? Yes. What about um, others like accountants, lawyer? Did you have a professional team surrounding you and helping you? Well, that's where I used um, my military uh, affiliation. Uh, as a retired uh, service member, I was able to utilize the, uh, the Navy's the Legal Service Center. And so they reviewed some of our contracts. Uh, they couldn't necessarily always give me specific recommendations or advice, but they were able to definitely pro provide some uh, insight uh, or lead me into a direction, steer me into a direction where I can get the help that I needed. Great. Um, so what would you say was the most challenging part? The most challenging part was uh, the transition for, from the military. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain mo motivators that you have in the military. Um, one, the punishment, <laughs> loss of money, 
the commanding officer can give you restriction. Um, they can prevent you from uh, uh, going up for advancements. You know, there's, there's motivators that you don't have uh, when you're in the civilian or uh, civilian sector and you are starting your own business. So I had to learn pretty quick that um, uh, what motivates people in the civilian sector is just completely different than what motivates people that are in the military. Um, it was a challenge at times, again, because when you do 26 years, that's a large chunk of time um, where you have uh, just maybe experienced one type of leadership. And you've always dealt with the same people. But again, once you uh, retire, you're in the civilian sector now. So I think the first uh, time I, uh, I uh, used some of the skills, <laughs> I'll say, uh, that I learned in the military, uh, the staff walked out on me. I had two quit. So I was like, <laughs> OK, now I'm short, people. <laughs> so this is definitely not going to work trying to apply uh, some of the leadership characteristics <laughs> that I learned in the military. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by those leadership uh, characteristics, like being strict? Yes, to yes, the point? yes, yes. Again, like I said, with the, in the military, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, there's some consequences. You know what those consequences are. Um, when you're not in the military, <laughs> it's a different set of consequences for not only the uh, the employees, but the owner. Again, if you, if you're not sensitive, uh, just in how your approach, how your feedback, how your response is going to affect them, you pretty much could potentially could be in in in, uh, in trouble and put yourself at a disadvantage. And that's what happened to me. Like I say, two of them walked out on me. So now we short staff uh, during the lunch lunch period, and uh, it definitely. Um, uh, put you in a position where you reevaluate and um, potentially your your approach and how you view things. So, human resources is one of the biggest challenges for growing a food and beverage business, right? Staffing is always Staffing. a challenge. Uh, it is, um, and also managing staff. Managing. Again, you, you have to, I, I think it's, um, in the military, they, they train you to be leaders. It's always upward mobility. Um, there's always an expectation that at some point you will be in charge. Those principles and beliefs just don't transition. So what does work <laughs> in civilian work? What did, you, what did you learn? Most of them just want to get paid. They don't... Uh, uh, they want to be treated fairly. Uh, they want to um, believe that they are part of something. Um, but others, they just want to get paid. They want to just do their job and leave. They don't, they don't have any desire uh, to necessarily um, uh, go out of their way. They want to do the job that you require them to do, and that's, that's it. And, and again, that's another thing that was different from the military. So how did you learn that? Were you told by someone, or you just learned by observation? That's, that's, that was experience. Um, I think if you talk to restaurant owners, um, probably in the first year, I don't think it's unreasonable to say that they may have had over 100 staff working for them. Now, um, when you depending on uh, what field you're in. Some people say, well, 100 people ain't nothing. But for a small restaurant that's just starting out, 100 people is a lot. Tips, especially if there's, uh, your staff consists of seven to 12 people. 100, if not more, in the first year. Uh, and that's, I think that's pretty um, standard for the restaurant business. Um, sometimes you get uh, high school students, um, you know, so they just transitioning. They they want to be a little independent, so they take the job, um, maybe not recognizing the true commitment. Uh, 
they got to catch the bus, they got to be on time, they got to do whatever they got to do to get there, and that could be uh, an inconvenience too. So mm -hmm. Definitely staffing is uh, one of the biggest obstacles um, that most restaurants, I believe, face. So the secret is paying fairly, treating them good? Yes. Yes. We've never paid minimum wage. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's an opportunity for you to take a tip credit. Okay, uh, great. So we will take <laughs> a short break and we will be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Got the click. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Today we are talking about food and beverage business and how to grow your restaurant. So to continue about key challenges in food and beverage area, you mentioned human resources, managing staff is a big problem and an issue, challenge. What about financing? Well, um, financing is probably the, the most important piece. Um, I pretty much depleted all of our savings, all of the kids' college funds, uh, to start um, our dream, our restaurant. Um, we did um, take out a $75,000 uh, loan through the, uh, at the time it was a Patriot Express um, that was um, specifically set up to help uh, military, retired military personnel. Uh, we utilize that um, through, uh, there, there are some confusing aspects of the uh, SBA and the, the different loans. Uh, typically, uh, the SBA don't loan you money. What they yeah. do is they guarantee it. So you still have to go to what they consider to be uh, user-friendly SBA banks. Uh, and typically, the SBA provides you a list of those. The bank is, is really um, critical because uh, you can get approved, but due to their processes, it may still take a month, month and a half for the funds to be released based off of internal regulations and practices. Um, so you, you have to have um, enough funding to cover uh, through those funds being released. In my case, I didn't have enough. Uh, the, because I wasn't aware of the process, uh, I had to actually borrow another $25,000 just to gap um, until they released the, the $75,000. Uh, but I was thankful and blessed that uh, we took out, um, so it was a total of $100,000. Um, it was supposed to re be repaid in uh, five years, and we actually paid it off in two and a half years. So nice. uh, definitely uh, thankful. But uh, without the funding, you just um, you won't be able to address the unexpected things that are definitely going to come out. Um, so how to get funding? How did you manage to actually successfully get again loan? through the through the SBA? Uh, they uh, helped. Um, with the business plan, uh, you, you have to be able to show uh, the lender that you have the ability to repay that loan. Um, and that's where the business plan is, is crucial. It, it, it has um, your projections, uh, and those projections should be realistic. Um, if not, 
uh, just because it's um, backed by the uh, SBA. The bank won't loan you the money. Mm -hmm. So how did you do projections? A lot of people find it really difficult. Um, how can you predict something that you have no experience with in? Well, uh, the funny part about ours is uh, initially the, the plan was not to open up a restaurant. The plan was to open up uh, a catering company and commercial kitchen that was to service other vendors that did not have a commercial kitchen and to um, allow me to do the catering. Uh, we projected that we needed to do eight caterings a month um, and that we had to have at least um, six to eight tenants utilize our facility um, as a commercial kitchen or a commissary as uh, uh, Department of Health Co. And so we used those numbers. <laughs> so when we changed the uh, uh, change and two, uh, the plan to start a restaurant, we just kept the same numbers. Because again, you don't, they, they're all just projections, uh, especially when you're dealing with the, the restaurant business. Uh, but the catering, I didn't have to have an inventory, so uh, a lot of the cost wasn't built in to my plan, or the business plan, the, the first one anyway. Mm -hmm. So you got the money, and then you used the money for a restaurant. I did. I did. Well, I had to tell them that, that we was <laughs> that we were shifting, uh, but we were we had already been approved, and uh, we made some minor um, changes to our projections. Um, included the scope of what we were going to be doing. Got approved. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So all these financial projections, balance sheet, income statement, was that all familiar to you when you started? Or how did you learn all of that? Well, uh, when, you, when you get a loan, uh, they require you to provide monthly financial documents, which is your profit and loss and your balance statement. And that was one of the motivators to paying them off early, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> having to get them together every month. But it was... It was excellent um, as far as making you aware what your true um, financial status was, whether you were, you know, and for us, we were in a negative. Uh, uh, we had some vendors that the food cost just was way, way too high. Uh, so uh, putting together the financials each month kind of allowed us to see that, hey, we need to potentially make some changes. Uh, in order for us to be profitable. So it's actually really useful to keep track of your numbers. It it's is. not just for a banker. It is. It is. It's, it's very important. Uh, uh, you have to be aware so that you can make the necessary changes. So we talked about human resources, financing. What about some legal requirements, regulations? Did you have any problems with that? Um, because of the space that we took over, uh, it was previously a restaurant, so uh, the permits that we had to, to get, I think, were considered minor, uh, but I understand that that process can be very challenging um, to get your plans reviewed. Uh, so you have to, again, that's why it's so important to have uh, finances to be able to uh, be able to continue to operate while you're waiting on plans to be approved by the city and county. Uh, the Department of Health provided step-by-step uh, -step, uh, instructions on how you can uh, uh, open up a restaurant, uh, have a kiosk, uh, start a food truck, um, So, and, and they have, of course, staff there on site that can help you and answer any questions that you have. So there are a lot of resources that there support you. There are a lot. I, I took advantage of any and every resource that I possibly could. That's great. So you're a great example for people who want to start a business, for sure. Well, thank God. What about marketing? So if you don't have people coming in, your business can't be successful. So how did you market yourself? Well, I, I think the, our marketing strategy was a little different. One, we were completely um, different from a lot of the restaurants. I think there were actually five other restaurants that were already open that provided some type of uh, southern or sold food. So we just 
became the six. Um, but there's over 2,000 something restaurants just on Oahu. So we, the market wasn't necessarily saturated. Um, our focus was just to provide the best experience and the best food that we could uh, and be consistent with it. Um, and then we didn't have any money for no marketing. <laughs> so we really uh, relied on word of mouth uh, to help the business grow. It was important that we uh, address the issues while the customers was there and try to, to satisfy um, any concerns that they had because uh, we knew, I, I, I realized that that would go a long way in them helping uh, with our marketing. So to sum up, what do you think are the key elements to successful business and to successful food and beverage business? Well for me, pray. I think that, um, I don't think I know, um, I prayed so much because I had so many questions. Um, the military um, helped me uh, with some of the focus. Um, they exposed me to uh, opportunities to make mistakes at the government expense. Um, and so when I transitioned, um, I was able to minimize a lot of the mistakes, but also just having the willingness to, to um, ask questions, share with people when you don't know. Um, there's a lot of people that's willing to help. You just have to let Reach them out. know that you need some help. Um, so. so willingness to act and ask for help would Definitely. be the key. Definitely. So where can we find you? If you would like to try your food. <laughs> I am at 99-080 Kahala Street, <laughs> NIA. Well, thank you very much. I definitely would like to try your food someday. Uh, so you're probably going to see me in the future. And thank you, everyone, for watching Adventures in Small Business. This was Victoria from VBOC and Ken. Uh, stay tuned for more adventures every Thursday, 11 o'clock.